All right. Hello, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I want to thank you for joining us today. We're here on Galveston Island. Uh, just give you a few seconds for everyone to hop on live with us here on Facebook. My name is Cody Macon. I work for the Houston Zoo Sea Turtle Hospital. I'm joined here uh, by Teresa from the Gulf Center for Sea Turtle Research from A&M, our partners. Um, we're out here today to release two sea turtles that were caught hook and line. Uh, one was caught on the Texas City Dyke. It was a little Kemp's Ridley. Uh, we removed the hook safely and we treated it with some antibiotics, some anti-inflammatories, and now it's ready to be released back into the wild. Our other turtle is much larger, um, is a large loggerhead sea turtle. This turtle came in hook and line captured on the Galveston Fishing Pier. This turtle actually had two hooks, uh, one in the mouth from the capture where we uh, apprehended the turtle, and it had an additional hook that it had bitten off earlier that was already down in the gut. Uh, this turtle we gave antibiotics, we gave some anti-inflammatories, and we just waited for that hook to work its way out naturally. Thankfully it did, and the turtle is ready for release here today. Um, for the larger loggerhead sea turtle, you'll see in just a minute, it has a special tag, it's called a satellite tag, that we place on the back of the turtle. This is to track the turtle's movements once we release, to see where they're going. This is part of a, a state research program with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Uh, it's part of a state research grant. Um, so we worked with them today to get this tag on this turtle so we can track it once we release today. Now both turtles are tagged. Uh, they both get pit tags, which is like a little microchip tag that people put in their dogs, stuff like that, that you can scan and track, but you have to be able to scan it. The difference in the satellite tag that we have on the loggerhead today is that we can see live where it is at all times, as long as that tag keeps pinging, right? Um, the, the, the tag is actually placed on with a epoxy that lasts for a short while and then it'll just slough off naturally, okay? Um, so when we get going here today, we'll probably release the small kimps first and I'll come back and then we'll, we'll take the loggerhead out, walk it out, and I'll have a bit more to talk to you about in just a moment. Uh, glad you're all here. Thank you for joining us um, and helping us to save animals in the wild. So let's get this thing going, right? All right, if I could get, uh, well, I don't need Teresa yet, but you can come over here and bring the camera a little closer. And I can show you our first turtle we're releasing today. It's this little Kemp's Ridley. And so you can't see the tag because it's, it's under the skin, but it is tagged. And you can see it had some, it had some previous damage. Um, but it's all healed up nice and well. may not look very pretty, but he's healthy. And he's ready to go back to the wild today. So we're going to take him out. So this turtle is a juvenile Kemp's Ridley. Um, they do get much larger, around 90 pounds or so. And these, this is actually the Texas State Sea Turtle. And they actually nest here on the island in Texas. So I'm just going to let him get adjusted. And there he goes. Yeah, he had a go button. Yeah, he had a go button. Swimming great. That's what we like to see. Healthy swimming, ready to get back in the wild. Uh, for those of y'all, if you're joining us live just now, we're on Galveston Island. Uh, we are um, going toward, we're towards the west end of the island, middle to the west end, and we're releasing two sea turtles today. Um, we just released our Kemp's Ridley, and now we're going to head and release our larger turtle. This is a loggerhead. Both turtles caught hook and line. Um, so if you're joining us now, that's where we're at, and here we go. For these big loggerheads, we like to wear uh, Kevlar gloves, uh, just because they do have claws and they they bite pretty ferociously. <laughs> you definitely don't want to be bit by a sea turtle. And let's see if we can pop this. I just set it to the side over here. Okay, let me slide this to the edge a little more. 
All right, I'm gonna get him to walk over towards us. Okay, all right, here we go. So here you can see the satellite tag. It's pretty streamlined. You can also see the flipper tag we apply. We'll set him down just right here. Should be good. We've got to stay back from in front of him. We'll let him take off on his own. Come back this way so you can give him space. And let him go where he wants to go. So I don't know if you noticed, but you can see both turtles, when you put them in the water, um, will typically sort of orient themselves and try to decide where they're going to go. They basically run on instinct and they go where they think they should be at this time period. All right. So as you can see, um, it's a beautiful day here. Beautiful day here on the island. Uh, so glad y'all can join us. Um, there's a few more things I wanted to touch on today. Uh, and it's how you can help sea turtles in the wild. So when you're out at the beach or home, wherever you are, um, try to reduce the amount of plastic you use. Uh, at right now at the zoo, we have the Plastic Free July initiative. And we are just focusing on just getting the word out on how to reduce our plastic usage. So remember, a big thing with sea turtles is the plastic bags, okay? Your grocery store bags. I know it's difficult to remember that reusable bag, but if you can get a reusable bag and bring that, that would help a, a ton because uh, even now in our hospital, we have a little green who came in and it had a piece of plastic bag in its gut. Thankfully, it was able to pass that piece naturally, but if it was any bigger, it will clog the gut, it will stop up their stomach, they won't eat, and it ends up uh, killing the animal. And that's, we don't want that. So we want to save these animals. All sea turtles are protected and they're, uh, they're on the endangered species list. So we want to do what we can to save them. And that's what we're doing here uh, with our work. Uh, that's why we take these turtles in. Even those that, like fishermen who may be watching, fishermen that may catch these turtles at the pier, um, like that, like with this loggerhead, we thought we had the hook out and it was fine, but there was another hook down below, okay? And so that's why we don't say take the hook out and just release it. That's why we say to call us. The uh, Sea Turtle Hotline number is 1866-TURTLE5, uh, okay? Call that number. Um, it works throughout the Texas coast. So anywhere on the coastline, call that number and someone will respond and come pick that turtle up. And you get to be part of this effort. Uh, saving animals in the wild like, like we are here today. Also you can help out by coming and visiting the zoo. Our motto is see them save them. So when you come see animals in the wild, I mean you come see animals at the zoo, you help us save them here in the wild. Um, so that's some easy ways you can do your part. Um, you can reduce your water bottle usage as well. Uh, that's always great. Try to use refillable water bottles. And uh, those are just some little small things that you can do that make a big difference, actually. It does make a big difference. So do you mind talking a little bit about each of those turtle species, especially the ones we just released today? Sure. Okay, so the, the larger turtle we released today is the loggerhead sea turtle. Loggerheads don't typically nest in Texas, though they do frequent our waters for feeding. It's a foraging ground for them. Typically those sub-adults like that. Um, that was just a sub-adult. It wasn't a full-grown adult yet, by the way. They get, they get larger than that, uh, much larger. So they'll visit these waters, the loggerheads will, for feeding and foraging. Uh, the Kemp's really that we saw the smaller turtle, they will actually nest here on Galveston Island and further south, uh, primarily in South Texas, but we do get occasional nests up here, uh, up on the, the northern coast of Texas. The Kemp's really is the most endangered sea turtle in the world, and it is our local sea turtle. It it's primarily hangs out in the Gulf of Mexico. When they hatch from the nest here, they do, do a brief, they do make a brief trip up into the Atlantic. They go around the coast of Florida on the Gulf Stream, they go into the Atlantic, and they hang out in sargasm mats, and then they come back as they start to get a little older, about that size, they come back and they start feeding off our shorelines again, off here, off the, our coastline. So uh, those are special to us. The, the Kemp's is a very special turtle to Texas. 
and our, our local uh, inhabitant. They, we also get greens. We have green sea turtles that, that live here on our coastline. They hang out more in the bay. They like to feed on seagrass, algae, around the, the fishing piers and the, the jetty rocks. Um, so if you see a turtle feeding on that, it's probably a green sea turtle. And our green population is, uh, is bouncing back after years of, of, of being pretty, uh, pretty glim. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of greens around here. They're bouncing back and our population is starting to boom. This is both uh, our efforts at saving sea turtles and the efforts of uh, seagrass restoration and bay restoration that are done by groups by Galveston Bay Foundation, and, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife and many other, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife and many other groups. Uh, are working hard to just restore our bays, restore our marshes, and uh, keep our beaches clean. And so, um, anyway, I just want to thank you for all jo for joining us. The other sea turtles uh, don't we don't see here as much. There are a couple other species, uh, leatherback sea turtles. We don't really see here uh, very often, if ever. Uh, we've had occasional ones throughout the years show up, but they're mainly pelagic, which means they stay way offshore, munching on jellyfish. Um, the, uh, the hawksbill sea turtle, which is thought to be a coral reef turtle, uh, primarily they do hang out on coral reefs. We get them here occasionally. It usually has to do with the storm in the Gulf of Mexico that blows them off course and they wind up on our shoreline. Uh, though you will typically see them off the Florida Keys, the dry tortugas, hanging out down that area, feeding on coral reefs and hanging out in, the, in, that, in that area. Um, so those are all of the sea turtles that we see around here. And uh, do we have any other questions? No? All right. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, beautiful day on Galveston Island. I wish you could all be here, uh, but you can. You're here live. So <laughs> um, good to have you here. And uh, just remember, our motto is see them, save them. Come to the zoo, see these animals, and you help fund our efforts directly to save animals like this on our coastline here in Texas. So thank you for joining us. And